Hi everyone and welcome to And So On Knitting Edition. My name is Lisa and today I have 10 free knitting patterns to share with you. Okay, so not unexpectedly, my knitting mojo went way down in January. And this actually is not new for me. It's just the first time that I've really recognized the fact that the fact that I over knit, <laughs> I won't say over knit, but that I knit rather obsessively in the kind of last quarter of the year, I do find a kind of dip in January and February, also because I'm starting to see that it's getting a bit warmer. And so my my instinct to to hibernate and to nest tends to start to wane a little bit. And I am not necessarily as into spring summer knitting as I am into fall winter knitting. Um, and that kind of flip flops with my sewing. I like sewing better in the spring summer and uh, and less so in the fall winter so uh, that's fine i'm i like to roll with that this is my hobby it's my creativity and the minute i try and put mm, expectations or demands on myself creatively is when my mojo just completely disappears so right now uh, i'm listening to myself and kind of just working on things that make me happy so although I do have a few finished objects to share with you, I don't have very many new cast-ons. And so I thought what I would do is share with you 10 of my favorite free knitting patterns. And the funny thing is, is I thought that I was just gonna have to show you pictures, but I was very, very quickly able to find all 10 of them in my apartment, which means that they are things that get worn often, which means that they're even better patterns. So, okay, so let's first just start with what I'm wearing because that's my major finished object. And this is the Agnes Pullover by Camila Vad. And I'll put in some pictures of me wearing it so you can see it a little more fully. So this is in Ulysse Yarn by Dereram Natura. And it's absolutely, let me get a little closer. I love this yarn. I mean, people have been raving about it for ages. Totally, totally valid. Um, you can see that this is a high neckline. I feel nothing at all. I have worn this nonstop. It is pilling a teeny bit. Well, it doesn't really bother me too much. It doesn't look messy or yucky. I just need to kind of, you know, glean it a little bit here and there. Although, to be honest, I didn't notice until I put it on for this and I'm bad. I just kind of pick them off and <laughs> throw them at the window. Literally, I just open the window and chuck them out. Um, if anything, uh, it's a little on the small side. If it's a bit closer to the body than I expected, I did swatch for this, but then I unraveled it. So I don't know if maybe my gauge is a little bit off. I made the second size. I probably could have made the third size, but honestly, I like the fit. It's I've made a few oversized sweaters lately. So something that fits a little bit closer to the body is nice. I like the length. If you saw in the photos, it hits me right at my, my belt line with when I'm wearing kind of mid high, mid rise jeans. So the length is lovely. The only thing is, again, I've made the sleeves too short. I don't know how I keep doing that. Um, I feel like they shrink up on me after I block. So in this case, uh, I'm doing a knit night tonight and I think I'm just gonna bite the bullet and unravel these and keep going. I have plenty of yarn left in this color. So these are four colors. We've got Cedre, which is the green. Hopefully the colors are coming out here. It's a bit of a dingy day, but Cedre is the green. Eucalyptus is the lighter green here. This color here is called Darjeeling. It's like a caramel brown, and I have a lot of this left, so I'm gonna be using that in a future project. And then the white color is Poivre Blanc, which is white pepper. Um, yeah, so I have lots of left, I'm gonna redo that. Other than that, couldn't recommend this pattern higher. It was a bit of a irritation for me to do the um, rounds that had three colors in it. I definitely prefer two colors in one round, but in the end, I love the sweater so much that I don't mind. Okay, first I want to announce the two winners of my giveaway for the Knitting First Cal. Thank you so much for everyone who joined in. I hope that you felt inspired to try something new, whether or not you even got through it or even got started. If you feel inspired, then that is exactly what Rebecca and I were hoping to achieve. So I have two prizes and Rebecca has two prizes. She'll be announcing hers over there. So my two prizes are Selma from Little Big Knits has two patterns in her Ravelry store. She has the Westboro hat and the West Village skirt, and she is giving that set away to one of our winners. So my winner for that is, dun da da da, Knitting in Purrs, who made a very cute pair of felted slippers. Congratulations. 
And then the other thing I have is a pattern of your choice from Sari Nordland. So my last test that I did for Sari Nordland, I got a code for a free pattern and I'm giving you guys that free pattern. And that is going to dun, da, 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 Sarah Knits UK in Macclesfield. And she did a very cute pair of socks. So thank you so much to both winners. Thank you so much for everyone who took part and hopefully we can do it again next year. So let's start with this one. This is the Taylor Swift Red Scarf by Espace Tricot. It is on their website. I will link it below. Oh, this sweater. <laughs> Sorry, this scarf. Oh, this took me forever. Scarves, no fun. No me gusta. I don't like them. <laughs> Scarves are endless and boring and just not my bag. But my daughter really wanted the Taylor Swift scarf and she wanted it really long. I made this in an acrylic yarn that I got from a local shop. The whole thing cost me $7.50 to make and that includes the ball that I have left to put the tassels on. I haven't put them on yet. I've still got a, um, a stitch marker on here to mark the right side. The good thing, if you don't mind knitting scarves, is that this pattern is an eight row repeat and it's very memorizable. So once I had memorized it, I didn't have to look back at the pattern again and it's a great mindless knit, but maybe I would have enjoyed it more if I wasn't using acrylic yarn. The acrylic was definitely, um, I mean, I can put it on. It's a great color, great color. Doesn't pick, obviously, because it's acrylic. Um, it was Ecotech acrylic, so at least it's good quality acrylic. Um, and yeah, it's, it is nice. It's a very nice scarf. She really likes it. So if you are someone who doesn't mind the endless drudgery of a scarf, <laughs> ask me how I really feel. This is a great pattern. Okay, this is actually a little bonus. This is number 11. This is one that everyone has heard of, so I didn't really feel like putting it in the number in the 10 free patterns, but this is the Flax by Tin Can Knit. This is the teeniest, tiniest size. It's in Drops Air. Um, you can see it has this little panel on the side in Garter. It's really sweet and um, it's it's teeny, teeny, tiny. I don't know, now I'm worried that it's that it's too tiny and that it's not gonna fit the recipient. So I may end up actually knitting this again and maybe saving this for the next newborn that comes my way, but very great pattern. And if you're not familiar with the flax, it's a very easy pattern. The instructions are amazing. And if you've never knit, um, if you've never knit a sweater before, this is a great first sweater. In fact, all of these patterns are great for beginners or adventurous beginners, 100%. That's one of the great things about all of these patterns. A word on free patterns in general, usually they're put out by a designer either as a thank you, but often because they want to show you what their pattern st writing style is like. They want to show you what their instructions look like, the quality, that kind of thing. And so there's a reason why they're putting that out there. So I always like to make sure that I favorite and put that pattern in my library so that it at least gives that designer a little thank you. I also share it on my Instagram. So if you have that, and that's just a way to kind of share, what do they call it? Sharing is caring or something like that <laughs> to thank them for the pattern, even though they're not charging you for it. So that's just an idea. Okay, so the next pattern are the Friends Fingerless Mittens by Danny Sunshine. I made these for Lily using some leftover yarn that I had. You make these in DK and they come in small child, older child, adult small, adult medium and adult large. Um, and again, everything will be listed below, but these are a free pattern, super quick, perfect for, I mean, they're not made for me, but actually they fit me fine. Perfect for those little extra bits of yarn. This is a knit crate yarn that was um, sort of some cotton in there. So it's really nice and soft. So highly recommend this pattern and I'll link to it below. Next is my Turtle Dove sweater by Espace Tricot. I call this my two-tone Turtle Dove. Uh, this is one of the first sweaters I ever made. I remember making it at our cottage. It was a really kind of wintry week. Maybe it, it might have just been like just after Christmas or just after Thanksgiving or something like that. And uh, this took me, I think, five days to knit. It was super fast. I'll put in some pictures of me wearing it. Again, I went for the shorter sleeves as per the pattern. I'm gonna take this off the hanger. I did it to show it to you, but now I'm worried I'm stretching it out. Um, as per the pattern, I wish I'd made them longer. I actually did go make them, go back and make them slightly longer. I wish I'd made them longer still. <laughs> um, this is made of Drops Air, I think. Yeah, 
This is made of drops air. It's funny, I thought that I hadn't used drops air before. I feel like they've changed it since I last used it because this and this do not feel the same at all. I'm not sure about that. Um, I got this yarn uh, secondhand, like on Facebook, and uh, this is how many balls I had, and so I just made it. It's just, it's so soft. Yes, it pills. So, you know, some people have a problem with it because of how it pills. It doesn't bother me so much. And honestly, this is one of my oldest sweaters, and it's a wonderful kind of light but warm layer to have. Now, since I made this, they came out with a second version, the Turtle Dove 2, that's actually written for Drops Air because the original was written for, um, the original is written for Wool Folk Luft. And I do have something made with Luft later, but I didn't want to invest the cost for a sweater's quantity of Luft. And so I used this yarn and I have to say, I love it, but there is a, a version, I'll link to both of them below. Um, although of course it'd be easy to find. The Having the Turtle Dove 2 gives you a slightly adjusted gauge for the Turtle Dove, but for the Drops Air. But I really like it and I've worn it a ton. Also a great first pattern. It's a little roomy, a little boxy, if you don't mind that fit. And like I said, I love in winter to wear this over like a long sleeve t-shirt or even a turtleneck if I want an extra layer of warmth. So the next one's great for like a special skein of yarn that you only invested in one, but you <laughs> really want to make something nice. So when I went to Barcelona Knits, um, the last time they had it in person, which would have been two years ago, I guess, um, I was the, one of the first ones through the door and I immediately made a beeline for La Bien Aime and I had a nice chat with Amy and I don't remember the name of the other lady who was there, but I had to buy something. I wasn't going to get a sweater's quantity because I didn't have anything in mind. And I just bought this one lovely skein of yarn it's totally different than something I might normally do, but all of those flex, it just felt so, so unique and beautiful and something that I would always remember. This is a cashmerino, so it's got a cashmere, um, cashmere content to it. And so the pattern I chose for this was the reed cutter shawl. And this is by Norfolk Knots, Gianna Bartelli Knowles. Um, again, just a easy, easy peasy. This is a great first shawl for sure um it's just alternating garter or it's, it's alternating yeah it's alternating garter and um and stockinette uh, i wear this a ton this is so soft i'll often wear it underneath other things or if i just want to like a very light uh light layer on top i'll put a picture of me wearing it highly recommend great for you know your little one skein wonder a couple of hats next. So I've got the Bank Head by Susie Gourlay. And this is just a great worsted hat. You can see that it's just, you know, you've got some twisted rib. You've got uh, a couple of, the, I think these are alternating. Yeah, so like every other round you're doing a pearl. Um, simple, simple, I think I've made three of these. If ever you go, I just need an easy basic hat that takes me no time at all for some extra worsted. Perfect. This one is great for that. The other one I've made a few times is the Tilda hat by Ineza Sang. And I've made it, well, I'll show it to you in this, but it'll be better in the other color. This was Drops Air Held Double because it's in a bulky. And this was a acrylic yarn. This was not in great shape, but you can see the, you can see the pattern better. This is an acrylic yarn that I just had a chunk left over. And honestly, this is a great hat. I wear it quite a bit. It's it, even though it's, you know, just kind of a cheap acrylic yarn and um, not very warm, perfect for our weather right now and easy to throw on, doesn't pick, you know, this one here, also cute, maybe a teeny bit more picky, little warmer, but both really, really cute. Like I said, bulky, you can put a little pom-pom on top, really cute, really quick, fun if you wanna try out cables and you haven't done them before. I think this was one, actually, you know what? These are slightly different. I lie, this one's not, <laughs> this one is not the Tilda. I'll have to find out what this one is. This might be the January hat or something like that, but they're very, very similar. They're very, very similar, sorry. <laughs> Okay, how about another sweater? This is the Trescau sweater by Alonga Vec Anna. And this is, she's a quite a prolific designer and has lots of great paid patterns, but this one's free. This is also DK weight. And uh, I made this from a knit crate 
yarn that I had on hand. You can see that the neckline has stretched out pretty badly. Um, I think that's just the yarn in my gauge, although it does have a quite wide neckline. This one I call my flash dance sweats sweater because it kind of falls off my shoulder, but it almost has a sweatshirt vibe to it. Like it's very, very just like loose and easy sweatshirt type thing because of the cotton content. It's really easy to wear and comfortable. Um, I wear this a lot. I do want to take a crochet hook and try and stabilize the neckline a little bit and pull it in because it is quite getting stretched out but overall this is a really great again easy sweater if you have some DK doesn't take a ton of yarn this is a really good pattern if you watch me at all you've seen this one a ton this is the getting warmer cowl by Espace Tricot I totally love 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 this pattern this is probably my most worn knitted item. I did make it in the original yarn, which is the Woolfolk Luft. It takes about three skeins of the Woolfolk Folk Luft. I did get it on sale. It's a pricey yarn, but for this pattern, I would say it's worth it because it holds its shape. I think some other yarns that you make this with can be a little bit floppy. And for me, this stands up really nice and high. I'll put a picture of me wearing it. I can't even tell you how often I wear this. I sometimes sleep in this <laughs> if I'm like really cold and I just don't wanna take off, you know, like when I get to bed and I just wanna stay cozy, I'll sometimes leave it on. And I've even pulled it up over my head sometimes, like if my ears are cold. It's just a great pattern, really, really great pattern. Non-felted slippers. These are the non-felted slippers by Yuko Nakamura. And I've stuffed them with balls of yarn so you can see the shape. Like the shape of these is so great. Isn't that awesome? I love these. So I made these from this yarn, which is a Spanish company called Dilana. And this is a bulky weight. This is bulky held double or worsted held double. So it's a super bulky. Um, this is a super rustic yarn and I have not felt, I have not felted these, but I've also not blocked them because I want to keep all of that lovely, you know, oil in there to keep it from wearing through too fast so you can see it's worn a little bit and the other one actually is right on the edge of wearing and so i want to add some more i wore these a ton last year i didn't wear them as much this year because the second one needs mending but um, i can highly recommend this if you want a non-felted slipper that kind of has like a shoe look to it they're super fast and I would say you could also like hold something triple or whatever. I think using a rustic yarn for this is great because it really holds on. And I wear these generally over socks, although I can wear them against my bare feet. This yarn doesn't bother me. But if you were going to wear them like slippers over socks or over something like that, you could probably get away with something super, super rustic. Okay, last but not least, last but not least, I have this beautiful, this is the Study Hall Shawl from Knitty Magazine. Let me find the name of the of the author of the pattern, Sarah Shira. So in, you'll see if you go to the pattern page for this that most people do it just in two colors. I had some colors and similar tones that I wanted to mix together. So mine is a little more, I think it's a little more interesting. Um, I wear this a ton. So this is undyed sock yarn from uh, Knit Crate. And then I've got, this is a little bit of whole super soft. This is a little bit of hobby yarn. This is a bit of Rico yarn, um, just like le little leftovers. This is great if you're either, either you've not tried mosaic knitting or you're a little bit intimidated by color work. This is a great start because you're just starting with stripes. And then this is all mosaic, which means that you're only ever using one color per row. And then you just skip stitches. So you're slipping stitches and moving them back and forth. And that's how you end up with this pattern. I wear this a ton. As a matter of fact, when I was trying to find this, it was right behind me on my chair because I will often throw this around, even throw it on my lap if my lap is cold. Um, I'm a chilly person, <laughs> so <laughs> I often get chilly. And so I love to have lots of these just hanging around. Okay guys, that's all for me. I hope that you enjoyed these free patterns. I hope that maybe you'll give a couple of them a try. Put them in your library. Make sure to give them a favorite to thank the designers for their beautiful free pattern. And I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye.